A man falling from the stars, a civilization turned on its head, a scathing examination of humanity's relationship with technology, a chimpanzee riding a horse. Yes, there's a lot to love about the Planet of the Apes franchise, but there's also a sprawling timeline spanning decades and full of reboots, remakes, and reimaginings. It's enough to drive you mad. Don't go ape over it. We clever humans have parsed through the sacred scrolls to untangle the quantum threads and present the timeline of the Planet of the Apes. Unlike other series, which can send you spiraling into a rabbit hole of what is canon and what is not, the Planet of the Apes cinematic universe actually has an explanation for why all of the movies are canonical, even the ones that contradict each other. But to understand it, we'll have to go back to the beginning. And we mean the very beginning. Everything seems different. As the universe coalesced after the Big Bang, a curious celestial occurrence formed in our solar system that can tie every timeline in the Planet of the Apes universe together, a Haslin curve or quantum bend in space-time. Imagine a tangle of bridges arcing over and through different time streams. An astronaut or apestronaut passing through this time tangle essentially crosses a bridge either going backward or forwards in time, but one's actions in the past can alter the time stream's future, potentially creating a different branch altogether. Together. Oh, and don't forget about relativity. On a ship traveling close to light speed, what is a few moments to the passengers can be hundreds of years down the gravity well of a planet. So how to keep track of what happens when? The best way is to follow one person's, or ape's, personal timeline. We'll start with the one who started and ended it all, George Taylor. Let's take a stroll through the Taylor timeline. I've tucked my crew in for the long sleep, and I'll be joining them. In January of 1972, the Taylor timeline, George Taylor and three other crew members leave Earth on spaceship Icarus, known as the Liberty One, intending to travel to another planet. Taylor spends six months awake monitoring the mission and then goes into hibernation. Shortly after Taylor puts himself into hibernation, Stuart, another crew member, has an air leak in her chamber and dies. The surviving crew hibernates for another year. Unbeknownst to them, the ship encounters an anomaly, the Hasselin Curve, and never makes it to another planet. They crash land and manage to send off a distress signal, which bounces back in time, reaching Earth in 1972. And the distress call from the Icarus is received. Astronaut John Brent and crew are sent out in a ship following Taylor's trajectory. They too get slingshotted through time along the Hasselin Curve. We'll catch up with them later. Yep, the Taylor timeline Earth in 1972 is wild and it's about to get even wilder. Taylor's ship crashes off the California coast, but it's a ship containing apes from the future. Zira, Cornelius, and Dr. Milo had fled in the spaceship from their present into Earth's past, AKA 1973. They're met with distrust and fear at first, and Dr. Milo is killed while being held in a zoo. They're grilled in front of a special council, which records their testimonies and seals them away for posterity. Dr. Otto Haslin, the scientist famous for hypothesizing the Haslin curve, discovers Zira is pregnant and worries that a hyper-intelligent ape child could spell the end of humanity. Zira and Cornelius are then treated as honored visitors. Then it's back to distrust and fear classic human. Escaping from their human captors, Zira and Cornelius are aided by Armando, a friendly circus master. Zira gives birth to her child, Caesar, but for his own safety, they secretly swap him with a regular chimpanzee baby. Zira and Cornelius go back on the run, leaving the infant to be raised by Armando and the circus folk. Dr. Haslin tracks down Zira and Cornelius and kills them and the chimpanzee baby in cold blood. Again, classic human stuff, folks. While Armando is raising Caesar, an extraterrestrial plague wipes out all of the cats and dogs on Earth. Instead of turning to rabbits and guinea pigs and the like, humans decide that chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas would make great pets and start to domesticate them. Shortly thereafter, good old humanity realizes that having tons of unpaid labor is way better than having pets. The great apes are brutally conditioned, abused, and used as servants. Despite their mistreatment, the apes learn quickly. Through some pretty intense Pavlovian conditioning, the increasingly bipedal apes are taught to fear one word above all others. No. Humanity really needs cats and dogs to keep them sane, apparently, because by 1991, the U.S. had become a full police state, with centers for ape conditioning churning out laborers sold to the highest bidder. Armando, the circus owner, had raised Caesar in secret, but a trip to the city 
Maggie goes awry and Caesar is captured and taken to a conditioning center. His intelligence is noted and he's quickly acquired by the vindictive Governor Breck. Breck's aide MacDonald befriends Caesar and becomes sympathetic to the plight of the apes, aiding them in the battle to come. Except to serve our end. Soon, Caesar uses his intelligence and honestly incredible leadership skills to unite the apes, sparking a violent uprising known as the Night of the Fires. The apes overthrow their captors, and despite MacDonald's protestations, Caesar vows to conquer humanity in order to free the apes. Caesar's war sweeps the earth, freeing the apes, but irradiating human cities in the process. Humanity is broken and divided. Some side with the apes, some die fighting them. Humans and apes reach a truce. It's during this period that some humans sought shelter and founded a new society in the underground ruins of an irradiated city known as the Forbidden City. Their exposure mutates their genome, but allows them to reproduce. Caesar founds Ape City and appoints the wise orangutan Mandemus to safeguard the armory, allowing only those with good purpose to access weaponry. He also forbids humans from saying no to any ape. Caesar starts a family. Congrats, man. You've been through a lot. McDonald's brother guides Caesar through the Forbidden City, where they find the special hearing testimony telling of Zira and Cornelius' true origins. They are targeted by the mutated humans living underground who track them back to Ape City. A guerrilla general, Aldo, wants to subjugate all humans and kills Caesar's son in order to achieve his goal. Caesar seeks revenge, killing Aldo, breaking his own taboo, ape must not kill ape. An orangutan known as Lawgiver recounts Caesar's story to a group of ape and human children. His words will become known as the Sacred Scrolls and found the basis of all ape society and religion. Over a thousand years pass, ape society evolves, humans devolve and become totally subjugated and hunted for sport. George Taylor, remember him, and the crew have accidentally traveled along the Haslin Curve and crash land in the year 3950. 55, even though their Earth clock reads 3978, though this was likely a malfunction. Thinking they're on an alien planet, they seek out habitable land. They encounter devolved humans who have lost the power of speech and are captured by highly evolved apes who have built a society primarily divided into orangutan lawmakers, guerrilla soldiers, and chimpanzee scientists. Humans are treated like animals hunted and experimented on because the sacred scrolls warn against the ascension of humanity. Taylor befriends Zira and Cornelius, remember them, two chimpanzee scientists who suspect that humanity once used language and was the dominant culture on the planet. He also befriends a mute human who he names Nova. With the help of Zira and Cornelius, Taylor and Nova manage to escape and ride into the wilderness, discovering the true origins of the planet along the way. You they ride into an area known as the Forbidden Zone, where Taylor is swallowed by a mysterious illusion. Around this time, astronaut John Brent, remember him, crash lands close to the site of Taylor's ship. The rest of the crew perishes. Brent encounters Nova in the wilderness, and she leads him to seek aid from Zira and Cornelius. They're soon captured, but Zira, who hopes that humans and apes can live together in peace, helps them escape. Brent and Nova flee the ruins of an irradiated New York City, where they discover a secret subterranean society, a captured George Taylor, and a horrifying secret. That intelligent speaking humans survived but are horribly mutated due to radiation. A massive nuclear weapon survived the wars, and the mutant humans now worship it as a god. Reveal that truth unto that maker. The apes, fearful of what these humans will do, venture into the Forbidden Zone, seeking to destroy them. Zira, Cornelius, and Dr. Milo get wind of the coming conflict and flee the planet, launched along the Haslin Curve back in time to 1973. Back in 3955, Brent and Taylor make a last stand against the apes. Bringing the prophetic words of the Sacred Scrolls to fruition, Taylor's final act is to launch the nuclear weapon destroying the Earth. Zira and company witness with horror as they fly away in Taylor's repaired ship. This is generally considered to be the end of that timeline in a closed loop, which really puts a lot of blame on George Taylor, but hey, maybe he deserves it. The Taylor timeline loop is paused for now, but time waits for no ape. So let's dive into the Davidson timeline. 
The year is 2029. Captain Leo Davidson is on a mission aboard Space Station Oberon, training apes to pilot small vessels for spaceflight. The chimpanzee Pericles pod is lost while exploring an electromagnetic time storm, and Davidson defies orders to follow Pericles' path to try and save the ape. Pericles' pod is swallowed up in one time sink, and Davidson is flung through another. After the Oberon loses contact with Davidson, they head into the storm for a search and rescue mission, but end up crashing on the planet below. The crew of the Oberon and try to survive on the planet, which isn't Earth, but a planet with two moons called Ashlar, using the intelligent apes they've been training for space missions as a labor force. The apes soon turn the tables on their human overlords and stage an uprising, led by a hyper-intelligent ape named Simos. The apes begin subjugating humans and establish their own society. Davidson, on the other side of the time storm, crash lands on, you guessed it, a strange planet inhabited by humanoid apes and bestial humans. He's swiftly captured by the apes and runs afoul of the power-hungry General Thade, but almost as swiftly, Davidson is able to escape and lead the humans, descended from the crew of the Oberon, in an uprising of their own. Pericles' pod lands during the first major battle, having been flung through the timeline from 2029 to that exact moment. Believing Pericles to be Simos returned to bring peace, the fighting stops. It seems all is well, but General Thade escapes into the wreckage of the Oberon and finds a way off planet, flinging himself back into the Earth's past, where he establishes a new world order. When Davidson is finally able to make his way back to Earth, he finds an alternate timeline where apes dominate yet again. The Davidson timeline concludes, but there's still plenty more monkeying around as the grandest story in the apes universe is yet to be told. Which one's this, number nine? Yeah, uh, this is number nine. A pregnant chimpanzee is captured and brought to Genesis Labs and injected with an experimental drug, ALZ-112, vastly improving her mental capabilities. After a failed experiment, she is killed and her newborn is scheduled to be put down. The drug trials are shelved indefinitely. The drug's creator, Will Rodman, takes the infant chimp who has inherited his mother's genius due to the ALZ-112. Will's father, a victim of Alzheimer's, names the chimpanzee Caesar. Caesar grows and displays incredible capabilities. By 18 months old, he's communicating through sign. By age two, he has the mind of a human eight-year-old. By age three, he's exhibiting genius-level traits. Will uses the drug on his ailing father, who makes an incredible recovery. Will is convinced ALZ-112 is a miracle drug and continues his research in secret, developing a new, more powerful version, ALZ-113. Caesar grows and begins to question his origins and place in the world. And while ALZ-112 works well on apes, the healing effects begin to wane for Will's father. Caesar harms a human who is hurting Will's father and is put into a facility where apes are used for medical trials, including trials for ALZ-113. During a new round of experiments at Genesis, a colleague of Will Robert Franklin is exposed to ALZ-113 and later dies after unwittingly exposing Will's neighbor, a pilot, to the disease. Despite Will's protestations, Gen Sis begins more aggressive trials of ALZ-113, ignorant of the fact that the drug actually is a deadly super virus for humans. A news clip shows the launch of Mars-bound spaceship Icarus. Soon after, the news will report that the ship has become lost in space. Caesar, with the help of the orangutan Maurice, organizes the other apes, dosing them all with the stolen ALZ-113, and leads them in an uprising and jailbreak from the Genesis lab. They free other apes in the San Francisco area and fight the first battle of the War of Apes versus Humans on the Golden Gate Bridge. The apes win the battle and retreat into the Redwood Forest to found a new colony of their own. Meanwhile, Will's neighbor, the pilot Hunsaker, unwittingly spreads ALZ-113, aka the simian flu, across the globe. The simian flu rapidly decimates the human population. Human society devolves into martial law, then complete chaos. Only small pockets of humans survive and civilization is all but destroyed. But the apes are flourishing. Caesar implements a code of laws and Maurice teaches the younger generation to read, write, and speak sign language. Caesar is also crushing his personal life. He marries a chimpanzee named Cornelia and has a son named Blue Eyes. It's been 10 years since anyone in the ape colony has seen a human when Caesar's second son, Cornelius, is born. Shortly thereafter, a desperate band of humans seeking to generate power from an old dam happen upon the ape village. We don't mean any harm! Caesar forges an uneasy peace with the humans, allowing them to begin their work. One of Caesar's trusted generals, Koba, 
follows the humans back to their stronghold and finds them in far greater numbers than apes suspected. Koba wants to eradicate the humans while Caesar believes they can live in peace. Koba challenges Caesar and is defeated, but takes matters into his own hands, stealing weaponry from the humans and shooting Caesar, making it look like a human was responsible. Koba leads the apes against the humans in a bloody battle with massive casualties on both sides. Meanwhile, Ellie and Malcolm, who helped repair the dam, find Caesar, nurse him back to health, and reunite him with his eldest son, Blue Eyes. Malcolm helps Caesar gain access to the Koba controlled stronghold, and in a final showdown, Caesar chooses to kill Koba, sending him plummeting to his death. Knowing the humans will retaliate with violence, Caesar sends Malcolm and his family away and plans to prepare his family and the other apes for the coming war. While the apes go on the run, the simian flu mutates further, affecting humans previously believed to be immune. It's not killing them this time, it's robbing them of some mental faculties, including the power of speech. The son of Colonel Colonel McCullough goes on a recon mission to an ape camp and contracts the mutated simian flu. Soon after, he's unable to speak, and his father vows to eradicate the apes. Some apes loyal to Koba's violent ideology side with human forces and become colloquially known as donkeys. The ape known as Bad Ape, don't worry, he's actually a good guy, independently gains the power of speech and after the loss of his family, sets up a base in an isolated, abandoned mansion. Are there others out there? Fifteen years after the simian flu decimates humanity, elite squads of soldiers hunt for Caesar, believing him to be the mastermind behind the violence against the human stronghold. The squad, led by Colonel McCullough, is the first to find him with the aid of their ape allies. McCullough sends assassins, but they shoot Caesar's wife Cornelia and eldest son Blue Eyes, mistaking them for Caesar. Caesar vows revenge, leading a small force to find McCullough and sending the rest of the apes, including his youngest son Cornelius, to find a new home. Along the way, Caesar's squad finds the mute human child Nova and Bad Apple. Caesar is eventually captured after discovering that the rest of the apes had been taken by McCullough's forces and are being used to build fortifications to protect the military base against an opposing human army. Caesar hatches an escape plan for the imprisoned apes, and Nova's doll spreads the mutated simian flu to McCullough. As the opposing army swarms in, the apes enact their escape plan. Caesar stays behind to confront McCullough, who has lost the ability to speak. Though Caesar is wounded in the final battle, he still leads the apes to safety. The freed apes find an untouched oasis and found a new village, and Caesar succumbs to his wounds, knowing his son and friends are safe. His most trusted friend, the orangutan Maurice, vows to share Caesar's story. The apes flourish and continue to develop intelligence, culture, and political intrigue as humanity devolves further. Caesar's story may be over, but his legacy carries on into the future. And who knows, maybe even the past.